Our movie begin when a group of anthropology students recreates a rite of passage ritual. A lonely man uses this chance to take in a wife no matter what it costs. In an abandoned greenhouse, Delgado swears vengeance on a humash drunk driver who killed his wife and son. Meanwhile, Professor Doug Nash holds a lecture about the Chumash Indian shamans who believe they could shapeshift into werebears. Danny who's half Chumash disrupts the class by making fun of the shamans. But instead of getting mad Nash consoles her about the brutality her people faced under the Spanish conquistadors. After his class, Nash makes out with one of his students named Tammy and invites her to have lunch with his parents, but she thinks it's too soon to do so they're interrupted by a knock on the door. So Tammy leaves. Nathan Anderson then comes in and informs Nash that he wishes to recreate a brush hut ceremony for their assignment. Since his family's ranch is the site of an ancient Shumash burial site, excited Nash quickly approves that night. Nathan's brother Benny enters one of their ranch's greenhouses and seeks guidance as he digs up GMPs and weed. Delgado suddenly appears and a furious Benny tells him to stay out of his business. He then storms back to his room where he drinks tea from the gypsum, weeded, and hallucinates. Being a shoe mass shaman, he then drives around town while hearing voices. This leads him to almost hit a woman, but hallucinates her doing an alluring dance with the voices in his head, urging him. Benny prepares to abduct the woman when another man arrives to help her. This forces Benny to leave. After a night of party, Nathan goes to his friend Hart the next day, seeing his shotgun wound from serving in a war. Nathan thinks of it as his friend's rite of passage, symbolizing that he has become a man. He wishes to have a similar experience since he feels stuck. However, Hart warns him that what he wants isn't all that great. That evening, Delgado finds Benny driving off, claiming to be on his way to meet his fiancée. At a cafe, Danny has a panic attack when her medicine goes missing. She begins reliving her car accident so her friends immediately help her calm down. Later, the group heads to a house party unaware that Benny is following them at the party college. Students distress for their upcoming midterms. During this Hart catches Nathan staring at Danny and urges him to make a move. Nathan's friend soon spot Benny arriving and are weirded out by his blank stare as he continues hallucinating while he's dazed. They write Creeper onto his face when the younger brother catches them. As he defends his brother, the stone, Benny suddenly grabs one of the guy's wrists, making them jump. He then declares that he and his bride must cross the western gate and pass their test before walking away. Nathan tries to make him stay but fails to persuade him, so he leaves his brother in his truck. Later, Penelope leaves the party and finds Benny's truck. She hops on asking him for a ride home, unaware that the man is picturing her as an alluring tribal woman. With that, they drive off. The following morning, Benny wakes up and is shocked to see the markings on his face. He then goes to a room decorated with Native American drawings and is horrified to find a bound Penelope. The woman begs Benny to release her promising not to tell anyone since she understands that he was high when he abducted her. However, the man hesitates unable to recall what he did last night elsewhere. Mojo watches a woman with a dolphin tattoo named Sandy. Meanwhile, Nathan finds a crying Danny in the restroom. So he helps her to a room where he comforts her. Later, however, Hart discourages Nathan from pursuing the woman, given that she still parties hard even after she killed someone in an accident. Moose and Squirrel subtly barge in and mock what Benny did last night. Nathan explains that his older brother used to be a Wall Street trader, but snapped due to pressure, and was fired when he dressed up as a Native American. Ben even started a story that his fiancé left him and never recovered from it. At the ranch, Benny decides not to release Penelope because he's afraid that she'll report him. He then explains that since the ranch has been closed for years, he and Delgado are the only ones living there. Benny then wishes to take Penelope as his wife believing she is Chumash elsewhere. Delgado hears music outside, so the paranoid man quickly readies his shotgun just then the stuffed monkey attached to his weapon. Poncho tries to reason with him. Benny then opens the door and a furious Delgado tells him not to come there unannounced, as his place is loaded with bear traps. The man then announces that he's leaving the ranch for good, but Delgado threatens him to stay. Suddenly, Benny goes into a trance and grabs the shotgun, before walking away. Afterward, he makes G-Sen. We tea and paints his face. He then goes to Penelope and gifts her a Vela shell necklace for their wedding. The man tries to force her to drink the tea, but stops when he hears car horns as Nathan and his friends arrive for their brush hot ceremony. With him distracted, Penelope manages to break herself free and run. Benny then chases after her while Delgado follows. Having heard the commotion, Penelope screams for help. But Nathan and his friends don't hear her while in their cars not paying attention to her path. She eventually trips, hits her head and dies elsewhere. Nathan and his friends arrive at the house near the ranch with them are Nash and Tammy. So Nathan points the professor to the ancient Shumash burial site where he and Benny built a hut when they were younger. 
He suggests doing tonight's ceremony there. Tammy then introduces Nathan to her friends Roxanne and Carly. He then shows them inside. When Moose and Squirrel go to his room to do the deed it, Nathan quickly stops them. But Roxanne asks if she can share the room with him. However, Carly tells her that the man will share it with Danny since he likes her, which the latter overhears. Benny then arrives at the house and scolds Nathan for bringing his classmates over. However, his younger brother is concerned over his disheveled appearance and tries to interrogate him. Just then the older brother sees Danny and immediately gets entranced by her beauty, seeing her olive shell earrings. He deduces that she's Chumash as he rambles about the Chumash persecution. Benny stares at Danny unnerving. Her Nathan stops him, and the pair returned inside the house, leaving Benny. Elsewhere, Delgado finds bloody hair clumps where Penelope died. As the group goes out for a swim, Benny spies on Danny. Meanwhile, Nash goes to his vehicle to get his book. When he spots Delgado hanging out by his car, the professor asks him to leave, but notices Delgado has his book. After the other man returns it Nash leaves unaware that the man is contemplating shooting him. As the students enjoy themselves at the beach Mojo realizes that Tammy is Sandy by her dolphin tattoo. He reveals his identity to her, but Nash overhears and is hurt by what Tammy does for a living. Roxanne explains that they only do it to pay for their college, but Nash doesn't listen. Squirrel mocks the sorority women causing her and Roxanne to get into a fight. Nash and Tammy also argue about her selling herself, but the latter counters that she's earning more than him, Squirrel and Moose, then walk out only to discover Benny spying on the group. Delgado witnesses the argument between the trio, but Poncho warns him not to shoot them. Sta the man doesn't heed it its advice, so he approaches them and Squirrel insults him. This leads to Moose and Delgado battling, while Squirrel knocks Benny down with a garbage can. Delgado shoves the younger man into a garage, so his girlfriend rushes to his aid. Just then the madman grabs his gun. But before he can shoot a support beam breaks bringing the contents from the upper deck to crush the couple. The rest of the group soon arrive at the house only to find Moose's car driving away, making them assume the couple is leaving. During this, Nash and Tammy get into an argument, leading the professor to tell his girlfriend to leave. Unbeknownst to them, Delgado and Benny take Moose's car into one of the greenhouses to hide the couple's body. The older man plans to leave while he can't, but Benny refuses as he has a wedding to prepare for. Later, Mojo comforts Tammy as he feels guilty for ruining her relationship. This leads the two into a tender moment, unaware that a heartbroken Nash can see them. With that, he decides to leave, but Roxanne jumps in to join him. Flirting with the professor, Nathan sees them and pleads with his professor to stay. So the latter gives in meanwhile. Delgado returns to his room and contemplates leaving, to which Poncho agrees. However, after seeing the picture of his deceased son, the man decides to take his anger out on their guests. That night, he spies on the group at their campfire. He then enters the house, steals all their phones and keys, and destroys them. Nathan then brings out the Jimson Weed Tea to start the ceremony. But the professor prohibits this since it's toxic and risky. The student asserts that their society shouldn't abandon rituals and ceremony. But Danny argues that even the shoe mash have stopped drinking the tea because its deadly heart then suggests using herbal tea instead. And Nathan reluctantly agrees elsewhere. Benny makes G Sen. We tea, then goes to check on corpses only to find that Squirrel is missing. As the group makes their way back up, Carly gets attacked by a skunk, so she hurries the shower. Nathan tries to help not noticing that Delgado is watching them from the outside. Later, Benny returns to the house and spots Nathan making tea. When his brother leaves to help Carly, he goes inside, mixes gems and weeded into their tea and quickly leaves afterward. Nathan takes the tea to the brush hut where the rest are. While preparing to join the others, Carly spots Delgado. Watching her, this makes the woman panic, so she rushes away only to accidentally crash into a glass door and get knocked out. Meanwhile, Nash and Roxanne are the first to drink Nathan's tea, but Mojo accidentally spills the rest as they discuss an alternative drink. The professor and his new fling get high from the tea at the house. Delgado basks in his luck of knocking Carly out without touching her thinking this as a sign that fate is on his side. He suffocates a woman with a pillow. Benny witnesses this, so he tries to stop him, but is subdued by the madman. Ultimately, the woman dies in front of them, leaving Benny helpless inside the hut. The day's professor sees Mojo and Tammy going for a walk, so he goes after them. However, he hallucinates a shoe mash elder and nails before him. Upon discovering Delgado's plans, Benny begs him to spare his brother and Danny, the latter of whom he plans to marry Humash. Hearing this, the madman realizes that Danny was the drunk driver who killed his family, angering him further. Just then he finds Mojo and Tammy entering the greenhouse, so he knocks Benny out and follows them. Meanwhile, Nash smiles as he hallucinates a Chumash tribe seemingly welcoming him. 
In contrast, Roxanne screams as she envisions the brutality that the Humash people experienced under the Conquistadors. Her screams alert the rest and seeing the two hallucinate. Danny accuses Nathan of giving them gems and weeded. With that, they help Roxanne but discover that Nash has gone missing. Unbeknownst to them, the professor is following the Humash shamans, the group that takes Roxanne inside the house, not noticing Benny waking up in the darkness as the rest help the woman. They realize that their phones and keys are gone. To their horror, they also discover Carly's body. Hart attempts to resuscitate her while the rest tried to look for a phone to call for help. However, Roxanne freaks out from her hallucination, so they try to make her vomit out. The T. Hart goes out to find help, but Roxanne starts seizing as soon as he leaves the scene. Causes Danny to have a panic attack, leaving Nathan to deal with both women in one of the greenhouses. Tammy and Mojo make out only to get interrupted by Delgado shooting at them. He misses, so the couple rushes but stops when they discover Moose's car and corpse. The two scream in fright, allowing Delgado to find them. He shoots again, but misses, so the pair escapes and hides in one of the rooms. Hart hears the commotion, so he grabs a wooden beam as a weapon while he investigates it. A wounded squirrel arrives at the house, warning Nathan and Danny that Benny is the culprit. Just then Danny spots him from outside, so they quickly lock the doors to keep him out. Benny tries to plead with his brother to let him take the woman insisting that it's something he has to do. His brother doesn't believe this and thinks he's just suffering from the effects of the tea. Enraged Benny breaks in so the pair barricade themselves. In one of the rooms in the greenhouse, Tammy discovers Penelope's corpse and screams so the two quickly move. However, Delgado catches up and fatally shoots. Tammy resigned to her fate. She urges Mojo to leave her, allowing the madman to end her. Meanwhile, Benny tries to break down the door, but fails. He hears Squirrel insulting him, so he walks up to her, but she pepper sprays him. After washing it off, Benny grabs a shovel and starts breaking the door again before he can get in. Nathan instructs Danny to escape through the window. However, Benny overhears this and grabs her from outside. Nathan rushes out, but his brother hides with the unconscious. Danny, who he forces to drink GMPs and weed it. During this Nash ends up at the beach hallucinating a tribal woman leading him to the ocean where he drowns. Soon Hart sees Nathan running outside and tries to chase him, but ends up getting caught in Delgado's bear trap. He prees himself off, but still gets his foot injured. Meanwhile, Benny takes Danny into one of the greenhouses and hallucinates himself, turning into a wee bear. This convinces him that he's on the right path to enter the tribe. Nathan crashes into Benny's room and finds his journal where he learns his brother's plans to take a bride and lose themselves in a faraway place. After discovering that his brother plans to do this in the cooler, he heads there as Benny ties up an unconscious Danny. He hallucinates her in a shoe mash attire with the rest of the tribe waiting for him. On his way to the cooler, Nathan gets ambushed by Delgado. He fights the madman off and hides. As he searches for his victim, Delgado rants about how college teens are vermins, who only focus on pleasure and getting wasted. He blames this behavior for his family's fate, but bargains with Nathan promising to spare him if he tells him where Danny. When the teen doesn't relent, Delgado soon spots him and shoots. Nathan tries to flee, but Delgado corners him, forcing him to reveal Danny's location. Benny hears the commotion and orders Delgado to stop hurting his brother. However, the madman sees this as a chance to get Danny, so Benny tries to block him sick of his antics. Delgado knocks the man out. Nathan then hits him. But Delgado overpowers him just then Hart arrives and Delgado tries to shoot him, only to find that he's out of ammo. Instead, he knocks him out with his gun before reloading it with no one to stop him. Delgado enters the room to avenge his family. However, Benny steps in blocking the bullet meant for his supposed wife. As he bleeds out, he imagines Danny, thanking him for saving her. He then imagines joining the Humash tribe in the afterlife. But an elder tells him to wait as the trail isn't meant for people who stand in their shadows. Benny begs them not to leave him alone, but they turn away from him as he draws his last breath. As Delgado prepares to shoot Danny, Nathan arrives and stops him. His drive to protect his friends allows him to defeat the madman, eventually knocking him out. Nathan then returns to the room, horrified to see his brother dead. He goes to Danny and tries to wake her up, but she starts to relive her car accident again. Driven by guilt and fear, she grabs Delgado's gun and threatens to shoot herself. Luckily, Nathan knocks it out of her hands and comforts her until she calms down. Later, Danny and Hart are taken by the paramedics. While the latter assures Nathan that he just passed his rite of passage, unbeknownst to them, Poncho wakes Delgado up, who immediately escapes. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.